guys, I'm sharing my top favorite, not quite black, but very dark and read as black paint colors. <laughs> That's why I like to create a giant swatch. So I'll either use like paper like that, you can use parchment paper, or you can just straight up paint it on the wall. But a little tiny swatch like this, a lot of times doesn't really show you what the color is gonna be. So whether it's a super dark charcoal, or a super dark green, or super dark brown, or super dark blue that sometimes reads as black, it usually gives a little bit more dimension and isn't quite as harsh, although you still get all the drama that you get from black. Okay, so one of my very favorite colors to use is Black Forest Green by Benjamin Moore. You can kind of see it's very dark, but it's definitely green, which I love. I think green is just so beautiful and so rich. And so you can paint it and you get this dark color, but when you have the lamps on and stuff, it really reads green and picks up on everything in the room. So another green I really love is Studio Green by Farrell and Ball. You can kind of see the difference. A little bit I think is that this is, matte. they give you a matte or flat paint in the sample but you can really see this has distinctly a bit more gray. It's kind of more like khaki almost like a dark kind of cargo green, whereas this is like a rich forest green, black forest green. But again, this will read, you can see it's next to bluish colors and greens, but you can see how this could read black. And then you can see we're moving into blue. This is a really nice navy. It's Hail Navy by Benjamin Moore. It again is, I think, a very distinctly kind of blue go-to navy that you know isn't gonna be too, 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 too blue. But it has, I think the perfect combination of like a dark paint color has a little bit of gray, a little bit of like multiple colors. So when it reads, it picks up whatever's around it. One of my favorite blues in the whole wide world is Hag Blue by Farrow and Ball. When you look at it sometimes in pictures, you're like, is that black? Or it looks so, 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 so dark, but you can really see when it's on a swatch this size, it's very, very blue. I feel like it's like a dark French blue, like the perfect color blue. And I just think it's like incredibly, incredibly beautiful. Tricorn Black, let me get my shadow out of here, by Sherwin-Williams is a true black. It's not harsh but it is distinctly like black. And you can kind of see that versus all the rest. It's just a little bit deeper. It's so beautiful as an exterior color as well. I love it actually outdoors. And I just think it's a really pretty, pretty like go-to black. Next up is another color by Farrow and Ball called Tanner's Brown. And I just think it's a beautiful like brown. I personally love browns. I love the coziness of it and I think Farrow and Ball is almost like the master of creating colors that shift and play depending on what your decor is. So it kind of picks up different things and I feel like they look different in every single space. So the next one here I have Off Black by Farrow and Ball. It's her right here. Off Black is the most perfect way you could ever describe this color because it's black, look at it. But like when you look at it compared to like tricorn black on the end, look how distinctly more black and more dense it is than this black. It is a black, it's not charcoal, but it almost ha has charcoal in it. And again, it picks up what's in the room and it's just, I feel like it's a good go-to because it's so beautiful. You won't have to worry about your black being harsh. It's just like a really good go-to. The final color here I have is Railings by Farrow and Ball. It actually looks a lot like the color I have on the wall, which is Inkwell by Sherwin-Williams, and I'm also a huge, huge, huge fan of this color. I think it reads sometimes kind of charcoal at night. It looks kind of black, but then once all my furniture was in here, it looks like distinctly blue in person. It looks different sometimes in photographs. It just kind of is like mutable and changes like I don't know, with the vibe. With the vibe of the space. And that's like kind of what I'm all about. So railings, this is a great dark, 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 dark color, but it's not really black. Pretty much all of these colors will sort of read as black or will 
do the same thing kind of black does and bring that drama, but it's gonna bring a slight bit of color and just sort of like take away any harshness that sometimes black brings. These colors are my kind of dark go-tos. That said, I think you can apply sort of the tips to any paint color you like. If your walls aren't perfect, you're not planning on making them perfect, I would definitely go flat or matte. Any shine will only highlight any problems or flaws in the wall. If you go kind of a duller finish, especially with dark, anything that's not perfect kind of just goes into the background. I almost always choose the highest quality paint. I think it is worth the splurge. I have just used paint before that doesn't work very well. And so you're sitting there, you're having to use so much more paint than you have to do anyway. It's using double and it's just like not looking as good. So I've had that happen to me a lot, especially with dark colors because you want that saturation and to really get on the wall. It seems like it would be like, oh, it's dark, whatever. It doesn't matter, it matters. It will save you a lot of time and money, in my opinion, if you go a little more high-end on the paint finish from the get-go. Now you can go to like a paint, like a department store, and a lot of times they will match a color that you have. So if it's on your wall, or if it happens to be a swatch from another store, they will do that. Keep in mind, it's not the same paint though. So they're gonna do their best to match it, which sometimes is awesome. So if they can do that as a swatch and you can test it out at home, even then, I would buy the nicer paint finish from wherever you decide to buy the paint from. I am not a believer that dark paint makes your space look smaller. I think sometimes it can look expansive, like you don't even know where it stops. It draws your eyes to places it never went before with light colors. Or if you do the ceiling too, it takes away everything you're looking at and it just feels like you're in space. And you just have to figure out what's right for you. And I think paint is awesome because it's something you can experiment with. And if you don't like it, you can change it. Oh, one more tip. With dark colors, it's not as important. It can be because you have to cover over like light and keep going and keep going to do it. But a lot of times primer is a really good investment. I know you can buy like paint in one primer. In my experience, it's never worked the same and it costs the same as paint. So primer is a bit cheaper. Sometimes it's a better investment to go like cheaper on the primer and then have to do less coats of actual paint. Especially if you're getting into pricier paints, it's just a really good thing to keep in mind. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know um, what you think of this video and if you guys are into the dark paint. I always end up going like dark and moody. I just think it's so beautiful. I painted a bedroom I had at the like ranch house black. All I did basically was paint and it made the biggest difference ever. I feel the same is true for this room as well. So I think if you're willing to go a little rich in the color department, you could honestly make your space look just a little bit more rich, a little bit more cozy, and let me know if you would ever paint anything dark, and if so, what would that be? Inquiring minds want to know. Bye.